in an intriguing study that just came out this August 2016 in regard to fluoride added to the water supply and the rising incidence of diabetes. This mathematical model is, in other words, intriguing. But let's get right into the study. Fluoride consumption linked to diabetes. Oh, by the way, I have a bonus question at the end due to a prior study in regard to how much fluoride it actually takes to affect the IQ of a child. But that's at the end. Let us begin now. A recent study published in the Journal of Water and Health examined links between water fluoridation and diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a growing epidemic in the United States. Incident rates have nearly quadrupled in the past 32 years, meaning there's a lot to play in more than just the fluoride added to water, but still, this is interesting. It says, uh, years and show no sign of stopping. According to the study, fluoridation with sodium fluoride, it is actually the fluoride that adds to the water, not naturally occurring, uh, could be a contributing factor to diabetes rates in the United States as the chemical is known as preservative of glucose, sodium fluoride, not naturally occurring fluoride. Let's begin, look at the chart. It's public HTML, it's not yet fully available. Who funded it was the National Institute of Health, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Citation title before I pass over that. Community water fluoridation predicts increase in age, adjusted incidence, and prevalence of diabetes in 22 states from 2005 to 2010. I apologize. I have a lot to go through. Please look at the chart so I'm, because I'm going to be speaking kind of fast, so follow along. Study participants obviously were population models, human, and over 22 states between 2005 and 2010, as stated. Also included adjustments for obesity and physical activity and other possible co-founding factors. Two sets of regression analysis just that supplemental water fluoridation, and this is a quote from the study, was significantly associated with increases in diabetes between 2005 and 2010. Special note, what makes this study extremely unique is as follows. They looked at the amount of tap water that had fluoride added to it consumed more so than just the amount of fluoride added to the water. So the more tap water you drank, the more uh, that had fluoride added to it, the more likely the opportunity for you, how would you say, developing type 2 diabetes was. The chemical reviewed, also interesting, they looked at population average models and tested the association between added fluoride, industrial fluoride, and naturally occurring fluoride. That difference is important because ironically natural fluoride and chemical fluoride, or I should say industrial fluoride added to the water, have paradoxical effects. Results. According to the study, fluoridation with sodium fluoride could be a contributing factor to the diabetes rates in the United States because it is known to preserve blood glucose. However, natural fluoride seemed to have a protective effect from diabetes, even though very few areas in the United States have, uh, how would you say, significant amounts of naturally occurring fluoride. And it's also important, too, that no one pulls the wall over your eye by trying to correlate studies done on natural fluoride as with those in regard to sodium fluoride or these chemical fluorides added to the water supply. So, as follows, the model represents an interesting conclusion that the association of water fluoridation to diabetes outcomes depends on the adjusted per capita consumption of water as we stated. It explained, only using the concentration of added fluoride does not produce a similar robust consistent association. Meaning, just the amount of water in the water supply is not a good model. It's the amount of water in the water supply that's actually people drink that is the better model. For this reason, the researcher, which the name I cannot mispronounce, adjusted his calculations to incorporate tap water consumption instead of sticking to calculations to rely on parts per million measurements of fluoride in the water. The findings suggest that a one milligram increase in the county mean added fluoride significantly positively predicts a 0.23 per 1,000 person increase in age-adjusted diabetes incidence and a 0.17% increase in age-adjusted diabetes prevalence, while natural fluoride concentration is significantly protective. To conclude with the researcher's state, sensitivity analysis revealed robust effects for both types of fluoride, meaning the chemically sodium fluoride and stuff like that, that they add to the water supply, bad. The natural fluoride, good. Community water fluoridation is associated, their words, not mine, with epidemiological outcomes for diabetes. So if fluoride is a concern to a community, or should say diabetes is a concern to the community, then fluoride should be a concern to the community as well. Natural and added. Now to further the bonus question at the end, 
China, which is actually spending time defluorinating the water, kind of once again another paradox compared to most industrialized countries, they discovered in their research as follows, and this is why it's important for them to defluorinate. The mean value of fluoride in drinking water, and I'm not going to extrapolate, I'm just going to read directly, was 1.31. The range was 0.24 to 28.84 of fluoride per liter in the water itself, which in the United States were like 1, 1.9. EPA would like to see it down 0.7. But then that doesn't count the fluoride that you eat from processed foods and the fluoride from the toothpaste and everything place else you're being exposed to it. Urine fluoride was inversely associated with IQ in the multiple linear regression model when children's age as a covariable var covariate variable was taken into account. For each increase of one milligram uh, per liter of urine fluoride associate was associated with a 0.59 point decrease in IQ. They show a definite association between fluoride consumption and reduction in IQ itself. Something that parents should be looking at or at least take into account if they are concerned of such things because politicians obviously aren't. Again, that was the research from this August 2016 in regard to fluoride being added to water and its associated with human association uh, with the type 2 diabetes. Again, this is Ralph Church Channel. I apologize for having to speak fast. There's just a lot to cover. And I look forward to seeing you all next week once again. Catch you all later. Bye.